UFOs have been fired upon by jet fighters and anti-aircraft missiles, but with no effect. They give off powerful electromagnetic charges, often causing the breakdown of engines and electrical circuitry. They evoke strange and fearful reactions in animals and frequently cause profound psychological disturbances in humans. They have the ability to materialize as if from nowhere, but more often vanish into thin air in the midst of a sighting. Both human eyes and radar instruments have observed unbelievable aerial maneuvers, such as 90 degree turns of several thousand miles per hour, and have been clocked at speeds up to 16,000 miles per hour. There can be no longer any doubt, even to the most ardent skeptic, that UFOs exist. The question is, where do they come from? On the afternoon of January 7, 1948, an unidentified flying object was sighted over Godman Air Force Base at Fort Knox, Kentucky. The base tower sent four F-51 jets to investigate. The flight leader, Captain Thomas F. Mantell, reported seeing the object, and at 3.15 p.m., he broke away from the formation in pursuit of the object. A few moments later, he radioed the tower. I'm closing in now to take a good look. It's directly ahead and above, and still moving at about half my speed. The thing looks metallic and of tremendous size. I'm going up to 20,000 feet, and if I'm no closer, I'll abandon chase. Those were the last words that Captain Mantell ever spoke. Later in the day, his body was found in a nearby field, the wreckage of his plane scattered for half a mile around. There were many other sightings that year. In July 1948, it was reported from Strategic Air Command in San Antonio to FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover that an unidentified aircraft was seen by an Eastern Airlines pilot, co-pilot, and one or more passengers flying over Montgomery, Alabama. The aircraft was reported to be of an unconventional type, without wings, and resembled generally a rocket ship of the type depicted in comic strips. It was reported to have had windows, to have been larger than the Eastern Airlines plane, and to have been traveling at an estimated speed of 2,700 miles per hour. It narrowly missed a collision with the Eastern Airlines plane. And from an FBI memorandum dated March 14, 1949, comes this report. Flying disks are believed by the Air Force to be man-made missiles rather than some natural phenomenon, and that as much as four years ago, it was learned that some type of flying disks were being experimented upon by the Russians. It was further determined that most all of the flying disks seen by persons in the United States approached this country from a northerly direction and returned in the same direction, indicating a strong possibility that they are coming from Russia. On the evening of July 19, 1952, Senior Air Controller Harry G. Barnes at National Airport in Washington, D.C., picked up seven slow-moving objects on his radar scope. He called Andrews Air Force Base and learned that they were seeing the identical blips on their radar. A pair of F-94 Air Force jets were soon searching the skies over Washington, where they found nothing. As soon as the jets departed, the blips reappeared on radar screens and remained there until daybreak. A week later, Harry Barnes picked up 10 more objects on radar. Andrews Air Force Base confirmed that the same unknown objects were on their radar scopes as well. Barnes called the Pentagon, and another pair of jets came howling over Washington. But now the UFOs remained visible on the screens, and one of the jet fighters reported a visual sighting of four lights. At one point, the pilot radioed that the lights were surrounding his plane. But soon, the UFOs sped away and disappeared into the night. Later that morning, Harry Barnes made this statement. Quote, There is no other conclusion that I can reach but that for six hours on the morning of the 26th of July, there were at least ten unidentifiable objects moving above Washington. They were not ordinary aircraft nor, in my opinion, could any natural phenomena account for these spots on our radar." End quote. The Pentagon was inundated with questions from the press, and President Harry Truman 
asked Secretary of Defense Forrestal to find out what in the world, or out of it, was going on. On October 27, 1952, the FBI issued this memorandum. Air intelligence still feels flying saucers are optical illusions or atmospherical phenomena. But some military officials are seriously considering the possibility of interplanetary ships. 